Hi, I'm Melinda Elmer with Century 21 Masters and the Elmer team. And today I'm here to talk about changes to the tax law that are going to affect you in 2018. Hi, I'm Melinda Elmer with Century 21 Masters and the Elmer team. And today talking to you about what's changed in the tax law that can affect you as far as real estate. Now, there are a lot of changes that have happened and this is the, one of the biggest overhauls of the tax code. So I'm just going to cover ones that really will have an effect on most people as far as real estate goes. Now a lot of people have heard obviously that the standard deduction has changed. For single people it's now 12000 and for a married couple it's 24000 So that can affect people as far as real estate goes as depending upon your other deductions as uh, you may not need to itemize your deductions anymore or you may still be able to itemize your deductions depending on how many you actually have. The other big thing that has changed is that mortgage interest deduction has changed and it's now a $750,000 cap and this is only on new mortgages. So if you already have mortgages that are more than that amount it doesn't affect that change. It's really just for new mortgages coming up in 2018. Also, if you have a second home and you do write off the mortgage interest on that, there was talk about that going away, but the good news is that remains in place. Uh, the cap does remain at a million dollars, though if you already have it and if you're buying a new second home, it remains at 750000 Now, a really big change is that the home equity lines of credit have gone away as a deduction. Now the exception to this is if you are making a major improvement on the home. If you're making a major improvement on the home then it does still apply. Now capital gains tax was something that they were talking about changing from five out of eight years that you have to live in a primary residence. Now the good news is they did leave that the same so if you live in a home for two years you can still take a primary residence exemption if you move after that two years of time. Or if you've rented out a property you want to make sure you sell it if you're planning on selling it before three years has passed so you don't lose that up to $250,000 deduction for a single person or $500,000 for a married couple. Now another big thing that has changed is that corporate taxes have been lowered. Now for some people if you own investment properties you may want to talk with your accountant if you're currently writing off your uh, mortgage interest or other expenses on a Schedule C item in your tax returns. If you are you may want to talk to them and see if it's worthwhile for you to put that property in an LLC or an S Corp and see what makes sense for you tax-wise as you may get more write-offs if you change the status of how you're holding that property. And there is now a cap on your state and local property tax write-offs and other tax write-offs. So it caps out at $10,000. So if you are taking more deductions than that, then you're not going to be able to take anything more than $10,000. Just an important thing to know. And Another thing is that moving expense deductions have been eliminated except for military personnel. So if you were going to be moved for work and things like that and they're not giving you a relocation package, it's important to know that that moving expense deduction has gone away. Now if you have any other questions about this or any other real estate questions, feel free to give me a call and please forward and share this with your friends so they know what's changed as well. Thank you so much for watching, and if you have any questions, you can reach me at 562-316-2915 or at melinda at Thanks so much for watching.